Hey YouTube, how's it going? Mark here with another fragrance review. Let's uh, dive right in and let's get into the Armani house. Now this one is actually from the Emporio Armani line. Um, the He line. Uh, the He line has tons of flankers and this is one of them. Um, this is actually called Remix. So let's take a look at the presentation, the bottle in the box. Now sadly when you get this fragrance, the box is just a wrapping. Um, you just got to rip it apart so I don't have a box with me. And this is the bottle they give you. Now I'm going to take a moment. I know some people don't like me taking a moment with a bottle, but I got a vent. <laughs> this is horrible. This is the worst bottle presentation ever. I just want to... I just want to bite it. And just rip it apart. Anyway. I'm done. Okay, this is one of the worst bottle presents. Can you get any cheaper? This is what's wrong with Armani. Plastic bottle? This is like an Axe. I think Axe is better quality because look, this is plastic. At least they got like tin cans, I think, for Axe. I might be wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> and they're charging a lot for these He bottles. Like there's a ton of them. Like There's City Glam, there's Night, there's White, there's Red, there's the original He. There's tons of them out there, and they charge like 30, 40 bucks for these things. Um, if you're gonna go this cheap on the packaging, please bring down the price of the fragrance. You know, if you're saving that much, please give us a better rate on the fragrance. Anyway, I'm gonna be unbiased with this fragrance review. Like I try to be with all my reviews. I'm not going to hate it because of the presentation, um, even though I really wanna hate this. Um, now the sprayer, check out the sprayer. This is the rubber sprayer. Now anybody that knows Thierry Miguel fragrances or has own like Pure Malt or Angel Man, um, they know this rubber sprayer very well and they know my frustrations with it. Um, so this is just bad packaging all the way through. All right, so this is what she looks like. Um, there is some detail at the bottom right here. You see on Porto and Marnie, and then you see their little uh, get up here that they go like he il lui anyway <laughs> let's move on before I get really upset <laughs> bottle sizes now I like when they do this bottle sizes there's tons of them there's a 1 ounce 1.7 3.4 this is a 3.4 ounce uh, we're looking at pricing 20 to 50 dollars American give or take as far as this being readily available um, I don't see this kicking around that much anymore. It might be discontinued. I've talked to a rep. Um, they really didn't know what was going on with this He line. Um, he's still available, and I believe He Night was what the rep told me. Um, the other ones, like City Glam and White and Red, I think, got morphed together into one. Anyway, either way, I'm not sure if this is getting... It's going to be discontinued. There's no way. The sales can't be that great on this fragrance. Uh, so first of all, shop around if you are interested. Maybe perhaps just get the one ounce at like 20 bucks a pop. It won't hurt so much. Um, this one hit the shelves in 2006, so it hasn't been on the market for that long. Um, it's, it hasn't been in any of my top tens at all. This is an aromatic fougade at its best. Um, recommended age, I gotta go with older. This is a mature fragrance, I think, personally. Um, I'm gonna go 25 right up to 40, 50 year, year old men. But do I really see a 40, 50 year old man carrying this around and putting this on their shelf? Um, no. If you do, come talk to me because we need to work on you, <laughs> on your fragrance game. Um, definitely this fragrance. If you only own this, come talk to me. Um, you cannot be wearing this on a date. <laughs> but either way, um, yeah, 25 and 40, mature fragrance in a bottle made for teens. Good job, Armani. Great marketing. I'm not being sarcastic at all. Um, how many sprays and where? One on the chest, two on the neck. Good to go. Let's take a look at the notes. The notes, the top notes, we got basil, star knees, and bergamot. In the mid, we got lily of the valley, nutmeg, and cardamom. And in the base, we got vetiver, licorice, uh, white musk, and cloves. Now, apparently this fragrance was inspired by the disco era of the 70s, as you can see by the uh, 
the way the font of the remix on here and the fragrance itself they kind of tried to make it for older gentlemen and I can see that definitely hit it right on the spot so let's waste the spray oh Jesus totally missed my <laughs> I got my fingers great missed my hand okay so starts off with some lemon um, that's the bergamot right there. It gives you a citrus vibe. Um, I wouldn't say this is... The lemon is not authentic or anything. It's a synthetic uh, lemon. It's pleasing enough. And there's a touch of herbs. I can definitely smell the basil in here. And the black licorice, the star anise, uh, sweetness of it just takes over the fragrance right away. Right after that. Definitely with the herbs goes right into it, delves right into it. Now, in the mid, it almost gave me a cooling vibe with the uh, licorice vibe. Um, think Rive Gauche. Um, it gave you that Rive Gauche cooling floral with kind of like a slight barbershop feel. This is what this gave me um, in the mid. Almost powdery, but again, the anise is still center stage and overpowers basically anything that's trying to get through to me, to my nose. Yeah, definitely. Now, in the base, the licorice takes care of the end of the fragrance. And really anything else in this is too overpowered by that note that I can't notice any of the white musk. I can't notice any of the cloves. Uh, the vetiver, although, um, the woody feel of the vetiver uh, shares the spotlight with the licorice, uh, which actually, actually gave it a nice backbone to the licorice. So, well done as far as the base goes. Um, it was nice to see something uh, with the licorice at the end. Now, basically, in a nutshell, the licorice takes center stage on this one. It had an herbal feel to it at some point, and of course that slightly barbershop feel in the mid, but definitely the star of the show is the licorice and some sweetness in there. It was very much a dry herbal feel in this fragrance. Um, not too many people are purchasing this fragrance. So you might be the only one in town rocking this stuff. Um, that can be a bad thing or a good thing, depending who you talk to. Um, so for myself, personally, these type of fragrances are not my cup of tea. I, I hate eating black licorice. Do I like smelling it? In some fragrances, I do. Um, you know, if it's matched with the right notes, I enjoy it. And, um, but in this fragrance, this is not my cup of tea. Uh, but I gotta say it's well blended uh, so I'm gonna give it a fair mark I'm not gonna hate it just because of the package you know I really want to trust me I really really wanted to now some will consider this unisex I strongly disagree with that um, I don't see where some people felt that way but perhaps some notes came out to them I all I got was black licorice all the way through why would you hate this synthetic um, the anise, black licorice haters, definitely if you don't like black licorice in your fragrances, do not look here. Uh, very much linear, and I will agree with that. It's very much linear to my nose also. It, it had a few different things here and there, but uh, overall, linear. Uh, one word to describe this fragrance, I think I've said it enough in this review, licorice. Uh, bottles, uh, definitely uh, Lolita Olympico Masculin. Um, not that gourmandish feel that I get from it. Um, Lolita Olympique is on a different stage than this. Um, Kenzo Air, if you enjoy Kenzo Air, you might enjoy this. And the Rive Gauche Put Um. It really reminded me of Kenzo Air with Rive Gauche Put Um meshed together. That's basically it. So if you really enjoy those two, get this. <laughs> uh, but I think those fragrances are much better fragrances for the price. Rive Gauche is cheaper than this, easier to get. Um, so if you like that barbershop feel, go with Eve Gauche. And if you like the black licorice star knees, uh, Kenzo Air is your man. By Char Pass, um, this is on the cusp of being a pass. Uh, personally, it's going to be a pass for me. I'm not going to purchase this again. Um, definitely, if you're looking into the black licorice genre, if you're dating a girl that loves that stuff, this is a definite try. Um, you will not regret purchasing this. Uh, when I close my eyes, this fragrance reminds me of, it really reminded me of being in a dark forest. I don't know why, there's not really that much woods, um, but that's the kind of picture I was picturing, really in the deep dark forest. 
Uh, best time to wear this fragrance. Um, I put in night out. And this doesn't mean on dates. Um, I don't think this is going to work on dates. Compliments. I'm going to get to my compliment factor later on. Don't wear this on a date. Um, it's not good for the club because it's projection and longevity is not that great for this. So a night out, I would probably, I would say a night out with the boys or something like that, something casual, you can wear this out. Um, that's the gist of this fragrance. You can wear this basically three seasons out of four for a night out. Um, compliment factor, while we're talking about the compliment factor. This had nothing, nada, no compliments. I had to go search for compliments and see what I was getting. I didn't get any. This one got bad results. Um, I asked family members and the wife about this fragrance because I wasn't getting anything with it and I was getting frustrated with it. And I was like, okay, tell me what you think. I'm wearing this fragrance. Tell me what you think. Some smelled nothing, which is not a good sign at all. And the ones that did smell it, um, the wife didn't like it. She doesn't like black licorice, so she was like, no. Um, some said it was okay. Um, I think they were just being nice. Because <laughs> if somebody likes something, they'll be like, oh, that smells really good. Um, they wouldn't be like, smells okay. <laughs> no. Um, all right, so my two cents on this fragrance. Um, not for me. Uh, the black licorice is well done. Um, I think it's a subpar fragrance. That's what I'm going to say. It's not a, you know, it's not going to ruffle your nose. It's not a bad fragrance. Um, it just doesn't work for me. It could work for you. Um, so let's get to the rating system and see how Porio Mami He Remix does on the grading scale. See you guys later. All right, guys, let's rate Remix Projection. One bottle out of ten. Hardly any projection. There's no scent cloud. It sticks to my skin right away. Longevity, I'm going to give this one four bottles out of ten. It is below average, three to five hours, any given time. It's actually pretty good for this um, Porio Mani line. I believe the other ones are much less. Uh, versatility, I'm going to give this one four bottles out of ten. It's good for three seasons. I would wear it only for nightwear, but I could see people wearing it during the daytime because of its longevity and projection problems. Overall smell, I'm going to also give it a four. Not the best in the game compliment factor, hardly any. Seasons, I could see this for really spring and fall. Um, I'd rather wear Lolita Lempica or Kenzo Air for this type of feeling. Uh, never judge a scent by its packaging. It's actually fairly decent for a licorice smell and it's not for everybody. Overall, I'm going to give this one four bottles out of ten. Um, a decent licorice fragrance uh, for you.